Welcome everyone, this is Zonta. My apologies for uh, not getting back into creating videos uh, on a fairly regular basis, but you know, lots has happened in the past few months uh, with COVID and everything else going on. So, um, but in any case, I wanted to create a quick video for you today. I had a friend of mine asked if they could, uh, if I could create a family that is a line-based family so that when you draw the cabinetry, it would draw it and it would place the cabinetry in an array format. Um, so this video is really just to showcase you the, uh, the end result so that way the client, you know, can, uh, or the friends and whomever wants it can see it. Um, and so what you're seeing here is I'm in Revit 2021. I'm in a default architectural file project and I have uh, four different families here that I created and uh, each one is line based and each one is slightly different than the other and so if we take a look at this first one here and we select it um, it's called line based cabinet array family if I type in CS to create another one I'll draw it on the work plane and I'll just click and drag and as I click and drag and then finish it with the second click it automatically creates the array. You can also obviously change the length. So if I were to change it to 10 feet, it will automatically adjust and give me the total number of cabinets that can fit in there. The other three are very similar, but they're a little bit more enhanced in the standpoint of materials and a type of specific door. And then these other ones here use different other doors and worked to basically have the door geometry to be a family type kind of parameter so you can change one door for another door. So how did we, um, how does all this kind of really work? So let's go ahead and drill into one of the families. I'll just pick this one and I'll click edit family. Revit will open the family and this is what it looks like. Okay, if I shade it, it looks like this. If I switch it to say realistic, this is what it looks like. If we head over to a floor plan view, um, you'll see that I've got a line-based generic family. If I go up to family categories and parameters, by default, it's going to be categorized as generic model because when you start with creating of this type of family, I just started with generic model. I switched it to furniture so you can schedule it later. And you'll see that you have a reference plane that's already been created. Here's one that's called left. Here's one that's called right. Um, and I've got other reference planes here to denote the front, the center, the back, and so on. And if we uh, take a look at this in 3D, we can see that it has um, the base cabinets inside. These are families that are being arrayed along that length of four foot, uh, four inches right now. Um, the reason it's set to initially four feet, four inches is because each cabinet, if I switch this to say wireframe to see through it, each of these cabinets, the total width is two feet, two inches. So um, when you select and insert this cabinet insert family inside this host family, um, you can place it, align it, lock it, and then you can array it. And so that array has a value and you can take that value and you can parameterize that value. In this case, I set it as the number of cabinets. And if we go into the family types window, we can look at this um, dialog box and we can see what all the parameters are and how it's all built. Before we jump into all of that, the other thing too, when we look at this in 3D is that uh, the part that's not the cabinets that are being arrayed, meaning the upper countertop and the lower portion of it, that's just a simple extrusion. So if I go to the right view and I zoom into it, if we click Edit Extrusion, you can see that the sketch is just the countertop, the backsplash, the thickness, and then the base um, where the array family is sitting on top of with its own little, you know, um, toe kick and whatnot. Okay. Now, if we look at the Family Types window, let's switch over to the Plan View. And let's look a little further. If we go into the Family Types window, I'll move this over here. You can see that there are a lot of parameters that I created and some of them have formulas. Okay. So for example, 
we have the default length, which is an instance parameter um, that comes with the generic model line-based family, and it's set to 4 feet 4 inches. I created a, a, a whole bunch of uh, parameters that define things like the backsplash height, the thickness, the cabinet depth, the countertop height, the countertop thickness, the toe kick depth, and I, this is just in case you want to change these values to make it thicker or smaller or thinner or whatnot. And then there are a couple of other custom parameters that are created. One is the array value integer, and right now it's set to two, and then the countertop length as well. Okay. So when you take a look at, and then this one is a specific formula because it's specifying the height of the insert of the cabinet to match the insert, the height of the interior clear space that it needs to sit inside, okay? So just think about it in, in another sense of, if I go to the front elevation, this base cabinet that we're looking at has a height, it has a width, and it has a depth. And those values have to match the inside clear space that you're dealing with and working with. Uh, once you get that all worked out and you take the object and you place it where you need and you align it, lock it to that intersection, which is the first click of the generic line-based model family, um, you can then array it. Once you've arrayed it, you can take that integer value and give it a, a formula. And in this case, the formula is the length uh, that you're dealing with divided by 2 feet 2 inches. Why is it 2 feet 2 inches? Because when I built this cabinet with the left and the right uh, vertical thick uh, members, um, it totaled out to be 2 feet 2 inches thick. So uh, what you could do if you really wanted to is you can take the generic cabinets that come shipped with Revit. They're already pre-built. They have like tw you know 2 foot wide, 2 foot 6 inch wide, um, 36 inch wide, and so on, right? You can take that family and put it in here and nest it inside this host family. And depending on which one you choose to work with will dictate what that total width is. And that total width be will be this value over here that you're going to divide into the total length. Um, also, I created a counter... Um, where is it? Uh, a countertop length here. Um, and that's going to be equal to the number of the cabinets times the actual width of the cabinet. Okay, and that will help dictate the, um, the spacing and the quantification. The extrusion that you saw earlier, by the way, um, here, it has an actual length, extrusion length. It has a start and an end. And the end of the extrusion length, I had it set to the length of the parameter that we called countertop length. Okay, so if we go back to family types and window, countertop length is down here. So I set it equal to this value so it, it will always come out to a whole number, uh, a whole quantity. Um, and then the other thing too is that this family, this host family that has the countertop, the base support, and then these uh, families in here that are nested, if I select one of them and go into the group of it and I select that family, it's an actual family obviously that's nested inside. We can actually click edit the family to get into this particular family. And if we analyze this family, it's nothing more than a shell. It's kind of a U-shaped shell. And then there's a door here. And this door is actually also a family. If I go to the plan view you and shade this, you can see that uh, that extrusion is kind of this upside down U-shape to create the shell. And then this door is actually another family that's nested inside. So if we click Edit Family again, we're going to actually open up that door family. And it looks like this. Okay. Uh, what's um, The reason I built it this way is because with this particular family, that is the cabinet insert, um, this particular object that's the door uh, family actually can be set up to be parameterized as a family type, which I did. If I go into the family types window, you're gonna see door type, okay? And in here, it could be three different door types that I've already inserted and nested into this particular cabinet insert. And so you can swap one for the other, okay? And then you can also create different family types. So I have one here called door style C, and it says C. If I switch this to uh, B, it says B. And if I switch this to A, it says A, and when I hit, uh, let me go over to a 3D view so you can see what happens. Um, if I go back to the family types window, 
set this to realistic as well. Um, if I change this from C to A, it looks like that. This particular door doesn't have any kind of uh, inset content. If I go to B and I hit OK, it gives me a glass little window so you can kind of see what's inside that base cabinet. And if you go to um, the third one, which is C, it has an op it has the glass opening, but it also is kind of slightly curved, so a little bit of difference. So you've got a door family that's nested inside an ins a family that's called the uh, base cabinet insert, and it has you know different parameters to control everything. This particular family is nested inside the host the um, host family that has the countertop and the base structure, and then that is arrayed. So. Once you've built everything correctly, you've aligned and locked everything correctly, you set up the formulas and the um, association of the geometry to those parameters. When you load it into a project and use it, you're just clicking with two clicks. Okay, um, so I'm going to close these files. And then again, if we go over here, we select this, we type in CS to create similar. I'm doing one click and then I move my mouse and do another click and it automatically puts in that content. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, because I already created different family types, I could just grab this and switch it from C to A, and it'll switch it. All right. So this was just a, a short video just to let you see um, some content I had been working on. Um, and uh, I will hopefully, when I have time, I'm going to create an actual step-by-step -step video of how to build it from scratch. Um, in other words, saying file, start with a new family called the generic line base family, and from there build everything, and then build the cabinet insert, and then build the doors, and then have everything nested and everything aligned and locked so you can see step by step. All right? Um, and if you do need the family or do you want to see the video, just let me know in the comments down below. Um, thank you very much for your time.